ASRock recently sent us over their latest and greatest B550 PG Riptide motherboard for AMD CPUs. And al although I don't want to make a full review about this board, cause like, frankly, I don't believe I have the necessary expertise and enough comparable boards, I wanted to give it a deeper overview for those who want to know more about it and maybe compare it a bit to our ASRock B550 Pro 4 because I believe that it would make for a suitable comparison in case somebody needs to make a decision between the two. This episode is brought to you by CDKeyOffers.com. CDKeyOffers has a wide variety of software or game keys for a fraction of their usual retail price. You can get your usual PC game codes or even library codes for things like Steam, Uplay and Origin. But the most important part for us are the software codes. Here we can get software activation codes for things like MS Office or Windows 10 for a ridiculously cheap price. And right now you can also use the promo code TS20 to get a 20% discount to make the already cheap Windows 10 license even cheaper. If you want to get that nasty activation message away, make sure to head down to the links in the description below and don't forget to use the promo code TS20 for a 20% discount. Starting off with the unboxing part. The box is covered with the usual suspects, a couple of nice looking graphics and a brief overview of a couple of supposedly important features as well as a short spec sheet. Inside the box we'll first get greeted with our motherboard itself wrapped in a anti-static bag and secured by some styrofoam which was originally attached to the motherboard by using the four outer screws and some zip ties. Underneath the carton we will also find a couple of mandatory additions like the IO shield, two SATA cables, one which is flush and another one which has one plug ending in a 90 degree angle, three M.2 screws, an additional M.2 spacer, the manual and this GPU holder which we'll talk about later on. The manual contains the usual 200 page explanation for basically everything you need to know in several languages, as well as a CD containing the usual drivers and uh, Norton for some reason. To make it even weirder, ASRock also includes a postcard with a PG Riptide logo, but the gluable mini powered ASRock emblem is quite nice. Finally coming to the motherboard. As usual for a B550 AM4 board, there is no extra fan on the chipset and ASRock was able to just put some heatsink on there with some RGB PG logo. For the VRMs, ASRock used a 10-phase design underneath the black heatsink with some additional PG Riptide branding. To make sense of that kind of big power delivery, we'll find the mandatory 8-pin EPS connector as well as an optional 4-pin in case you're planning to do some really heavy overhook. Even though the socket is absolutely nothing worth talking about, as everybody watching this video should be aware that this is no place for an Intel chip, I do want to point out that this PG Riptide does come with AMD 5000 support out of the box, which is not always given as the first P550 board launched way before the first chips came out. Switching over to the pretty impressive RAM support, with 4 slots running in dual channel mode and supporting up to 4933 MHz speeds, good luck paying for those sticks, we can stuff this board with up to 128 gigs of Google Chrome power. For the rear I.O., ASRock provides us with a pretty big selection. A HDMI port in case you're running an APU, two USB 2.0 ports, a total of six USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gig ports, one Type-A and one Type-C, a combined PS2 mouse or keyboard port designed during the Roman Empire, and a fully decked out audio 5.1 panel including an optical port. Until now I left two things out, one of which is the LAN port, because on this motherboard ASRock did not use the standard Realtek whatever pigeon post port, but instead they decided that you deserve to get your content faster with an Intel Killer E3100G2500 megabit chip. According to the marketing material, this E3100G is also supposed to detect what each package going through is supposed to do and prioritize the ones meant for your games. I do not believe that this is like really measurable or I cannot imagine how many Chrome tasks I have to have open until I can see a difference or make sense of this, but 2.5 gig is 2.5 gig and 2.5 gig is nice. And I find it a bit ironic to have an Intel network chip on an AMD platform, but no. The other part I did not mention about the I.O. is the Wi-Fi bracket at the top, because th there is nothing. As quite often with these budget-oriented boards, we have support for Wi-Fi, but we need to install the card ourselves. 
Luckily, if you really need it, these cards are quite cheap and can be installed on the dedicated M.2 Wi-Fi slot with an antenna bracket already pre-installed. Now let's hop on the I.O. expandability port. For that, the PG Riptide offers us the usual front panel audio, three USB 2.0 headers, one internal Thunderbolt header, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, one next to the 24 pin and the other one above the SATA plugs in a 90 degree angle, and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C header. So for expandability, this is pretty much packed, but it, it still doesn't end there. For fan support, we got three PVM headers above the RAM slots, two PVM headers at the very bottom, and one located right next to the SATA plugs. So a total of six PVM headers, which is also pretty nice. For RGB control, we got a three pin and a four pin RGB header at the top right corner, and another pair at the bottom left. For the drives, we got two M.2 slots, one hidden behind that M.2 armor cover, and another one between the second and third PCIe slot. Although these companies tend to name these a bit weirdly as the top one is called Hyper Socket and the lower one Ultra Socket, it's actually pretty easy. The top one supports up to PCIe Gen 4x4 with up to 64 gigs per second, while the lower one supports Gen 3x4 at 32 gigs a second or SATA M.2 which is 6 gigs per second. But there are two little catches here. The top one will also be bottlenecked to Gen 3x4 if you're using something that is not an AMD 5000 or 3000 chip. Additionally, you need to know that the second M.2 slot and the SATA 5 and 6 port are sharing their lanes, meaning that if you're rocking two M.2 drives, you will be losing two of your six SATA drives. For the other PCIe lanes, we got a total of three PCIe 16x slots and one PCIe 3.01x slot. The top one is running in Gen 4 x 16 mode, the middle 16x slot is running in Gen 2 x 4 mode, and the bottom one in Gen 3 x 1 mode. But keep in mind that the same CPU rule applies here, with the top one only running in Gen 4 mode as long as one of the two latest AMD generations is being used. Though I would not necessarily call this a feature of the motherboard itself, ASRock includes a small little gimmick which may end up being very useful for many of you out there. This little GPU holding bracket. It can easily be installed during the motherboard installation process and later on be adjusted according to the specific location of your GPU. And although I found it funny that ASRock managed to use every occasion to mention that this thing is patent pending, I do think it's a great move to just include something like that in, in case for future even bigger GPUs, because they definitely don't look like they would be getting any smaller or cheaper. But yeah, as far as features of the motherboard are concerned, that's, that's about it. On the software side, it's pretty much the same thing as any other ASRock motherboard. Sure, they made sure that everything got a little design overhaul, featuring their PG logo everywhere, but in the end, everything has the exact same clean and straightforward ASRock level of settings as we are used to. At the very beginning of this video, I mentioned that I wanted to compare this to ASRock's own B550 Pro 4 because they are priced pretty much the same with the newer Riptide being only $20 more. But for those $20, you will get quite a lot of additional features. Two more USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, two more USB 2.0 ports, an actual usable audio setup, one additional fan header, a additional front Thunderbolt header, one additional front USB 2.0 header, an additional USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, a additional USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C header, a secondary M.2 slot running at Gen 3 times 4 speeds, a additional PCIe 16x slot, higher support at RAM speeds, a VRM design with two phases more, which as stated before, I, I am not able to test, so more equals better. And most important, a two and a half gig network adapter. And if you now take all of these additions and tweaks, and of course, not, do not forget the additional graphic cards holder, patent pending, now I'm joking, but all in all, this is an extremely packed board for a B550, which is really good. Though my B550 Pro 4, which I very much like to use in every all-in-one B-roll just because I thought it looked quite nice, now looks like the B550 PG Riptide sister. Just, just look how different the rear I.O. can be. Okay, so this should be it for the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming Riptide. I would like to thank ASRock for sending us over one of these and we will definitely put it to good use in our other videos.
But if you want to keep watching, have a look at this video where I combine a 3900X with an ASRock B450 motherboard and a GT710 because a GPU shortage. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.